This is Elias Dufexis. You're watching that Tom Clancy show. I swear, guys, I am going to get used to that sound effect starting the show someday. But that day is not today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another brand new episode of That Tom Clancy Show. I am, of course, your lovable robot host, Mr. That Tom Clancy. Uh, well, some interesting news, at least for me, uh, happened right before we went live. Uh, the new uh, Bunchy Weekly Update came out with all of the stuff we're losing when Beyond Light comes out later this fall. I'm not pleased. That's about the gist of it. Save more opinions on that for later time uh, when I don't have... Oh, why didn't I bring my desk over here? And where's my coffee cup? There we go. I changed the color on it so it stands out more against my body. Otherwise, it all just kind of blends in. See, I pay attention to things. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Our guests today are working on a charming little platformer called Iris, Bits and Pixels. Please join me in welcoming Rubens and Vinny. Uh, there we are. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for being here. Um, <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for, for letting us come here. Absolutely. I, uh, I really needed to jump on the whole having a two-headed guest thing. So <laughs> thankfully, you guys got to be the first on that part. Um, you're also uh, my first guest from Brazil as well. Cool. So, <laughs> cool. <laughs> whoa, why did my cup just decide? Wait a second. I am on to something here. Nice. So, uh, well, welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. So good to have you here. Uh, the first question uh, that I have for you is kind of now a week long tradition. Uh, and that is, what games are you playing right now? Oh, we play a lot of Overwatch. We've been we've we've been playing it for some years now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we we haven't played many things uh, in the few weeks, I guess. We we're, we're playing little... Fall Guys. Also. Uh, yeah, yeah. We played some Fall Guys. Just like everyone else <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Yeah, uh, man, to be that team right now. Yeah. Aside yeah. from having to keep the servers up, but but that revenue stream's got to be just just great. Yeah, <laughs> their um, numbers are really big. Yeah, uh, I I even streamed it a little bit too. Uh, I hate the yellow team. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, <that's> <laughs> I mean, maybe if they weren't crap, we'd like them. <laughs> But they're kind of crap. It's you get the yellow team, and you may as well just just quit. Yeah, we um, Vin is actually keeping track of every time he he ends up in yellow team. He, he yeah, I'm 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 making a table that um, I I check for each team how many victories and losses I have, and so far the the yellow team is team is winning in losses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least they're winning at something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it does seem everybody is playing Fall Guys. I mean, I'm not going to fault them. It's a fun game. You know, it's uh, it, it scratches a whole bunch of itches. And uh, the one thing I didn't know about it until I actually sat down and watched somebody playing it and uh, was that it was a multi-round system. And I was just I just thought it was, you know, like effectively the same game. And it was just, you know, 60 people fighting for one crown. Like, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. But having that multi-round system, being able to so quickly turn around and get right back into a match, especially if you get eliminated early, man, they just, they really nailed it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it's really fun and really, um, yeah, like you said, you can just go uh, back into another match and you don't stop playing, basically. Yeah, so and it's, $20 is an entirely reasonable price tag for that game. Uh, especially considering that I feel I have gotten well more than twenty dollars worth of fun. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. maybe they're undercharging. <laughs> uh, that said, there's a couple games in there that just need to go. I'm just I'm just done with them. 
uh <laughs> like like the the egg hunt one nope get rid of it uh uh, yeah. uh the the grab the tail nope gone <laughs> just done with it i i hate the rings one the mm. one that i have to uh, jump through the rings i haven't I, I haven't even gotten that one <laughs> I actually yeah, I like that, that one, <laughs> but um, I really hate the one that that you need to bring the balls to your side of the field. Um, there are like six balls, and you have to have the most balls in your oh, side. Oh yeah, the uh, soccer eggs is what I call it when I see it because okay. it's because <laughs> it's the big like soccer yeah. balls, but like with the, the eggs kind of uh, idea. Um, yeah. Oh, and hi, Nick. Uh, Nick and Chet is one of our uh, lovely people from Pitch a Game. Um, so it's always good to see those guys there supporting in the chat. Um, I'm trying to think, like, what is uh, another thing? And it was, uh, I was talking with another streamer about it today. You know, the one where uh, uh, you're running up the conveyor belt and also Liam. Wow, we got like mad Pitch a Game support up in here today. Uh but with the conveyor belts running against you and you're running uphill and they're flinging fruit at you all over the place. Like, I, I don't hate that one, but I just wonder why is there a, a pretzel stick in it? <laughs> yeah. Like it's all fruit. And then there's a pretzel. <laughs> just blows my yeah. mind. Makes no sense. I just, yeah, the whole, the whole game kind of looks like foods and, the textures look like um, like uh, chocolate toppings and things like that. Yeah, uh, I before I had anything cool to put on my fall guy, I did make him look like silly ice cream. <laughs> yeah, mine looked like a like a watermelon. I just want the I want the dinosaur hat and I want the pigeon pants and that's it. I but... actually have the pigeon pants and I. I really want the dinosaur one, the dinosaur top. Yeah. I mean, it's how dinosaurs would have looked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we could sit here and probably talk Fall Guys fall guys, all day, but that's not why we're here. We're here today because you two are working on a charming game called Iris. And instead of listening to me butcher your game, why don't we take a minute... <laughs> Let the two of you explain uh, what Iris is. Um, um, it's um, it's a uh, 3D platformer. Um, a lot, it, it's a little hard to talk because we're we're in early development and a lot of things are being sorted out. But um, do you want to talk about the story? Um, well, it's it's a puzzle platformer, um, and but the thing uh, we we wanted it to kind of feel like um, the Zelda games, the three D Zelda games before Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted it to have like uh, dungeons and things like that, um, and well the. One of the main mechanics, we actually started the game in a game jam, Rainbow Game Jam. It's uh, in uh, HIO. Three years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the. Um, it's pretty crazy how many of these projects have gotten their start from like a game jam or a Ludum Dare or, you know, yeah. all these crazy uh, little game creation festivals. Yeah, because they make you think about an idea. So sometimes it is really good yeah um the theme um uh, well the gem was spectrum spectrum yeah uh so we we at the time we thought about of um light and colors and uh it, it, it's an uh, lgbtq uh focused uh game gem so we so we decided to go with the lgbt flag um, and use the, those six colors uh, as the main palette for uh, the game. Nice. So uh, yeah. So uh, the 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 main the main mechanic the, of the game at, at the time 
was that you would use uh, beams of color um, uh, to reveal things that you otherwise you couldn't see uh, in the map, um, in the level, so you could uh, see platforms and other things that were not there. And uh, like the, the metaphor uh, behind all of this is like, uh, because uh, the rainbow flag has meanings for each color, uh, so we wanted to use that to be like a metaphor for like uh, the LGBTQ experience of, um, uh, I guess, uh, discovering uh, the world. Uh, um, um, yeah, because the game will actually start in black and white. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you won't have any colors in the game. In fact, in this in in this world. Um, colors don't exist. Uh, people don't see colors, and they yeah. haven't seen for they, like they forgot about colors. Many generations, yeah. yeah. And Iris has been chosen uh, by some force to bring the colors back to the world. And in this journey, they will uh, not only bring the colors back to the world, but to themselves, and they will um, they will discover their own colors. Nice. So uh, a story of just recognizing the diversity within everyone in the world. Yeah. 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 And oh, yeah, the world guys. will change uh, as you as you find, yeah. as, as you learn it, the different it, colors. It's not only the colors. Uh, uh, we, we want to use uh, those meanings of uh, the, that are contained in the flag to to bring change to to uh, Iris's world uh, once he unlocks these new these new colors. Nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah. Uh, uh, if you aren't familiar with the show, uh, I wholeheartedly support uh, all of what you just said, uh, <laughs> because uh, a you know diversity is a strength, not a weakness, as some people would have us believe. And on top of that, it creates just you know um, it gives us a better and more complete vision of the world and you know by ignoring these things and these people it's it's we're doing not only a disservice to all of the people that are being ignored and overlooked and we're doing a disservice to all of ourselves as well by you know blocking out all of these bits of wisdom and human experience that we could be learning from and growing from. Yeah. So that's very true. That very well, well said. <laughs> Thank you. I've said it a few times, so I've had the opportunity to really work on it. Uh, and I practice it in front of the mirror every morning. Uh, but you know, that's, uh, like, wow. You know, that, that is, you know, a lovely way of using games uh, to, you know, like trying to figure out how to word this appropriately. Uh, like all the thoughts are appropriately ordered in my head, but making them <laughs> into words to then share with people is the hard part. Um, yeah, I can relate. <laughs> yeah, it, you're using the the relative safety of the medium in games to really tell a complex uh, story with social value in a situation yeah. where people don't always accept that. Like you mentioned the Legend of Zelda inspiration and like people play Legend of Zelda games to solve puzzles and slay monsters. They don't expect to get a narrative in there about inclusivity and diversity. And like, that's pretty brave. <laughs> so, well, games are just a medium uh, yeah. to tell stories, basically. So, um, any story can be told. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you guys picked a pretty good one. Um, Thanks. Thanks. Now, one of the big questions I have is because uh, you two are the first uh, people I've had on the show who are working in Godot, um, and it's it's pronounced Godot. Not Godot, not Godot. It's Godot. Uh, I just, I have, 
I have to do it. I told you guys <laughs> before the show, it just bugs me so much. Uh, what's the experience like working with Godot? Uh, I, I haven't worked with it. I, the bulk of my experience is in Unreal. Uh, I've dabbled in Unity a little bit. Uh, Nick in chat likes to use Blender. Uh, yeah, we, we use that too. Oh, well, he uses Blender as a game engine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard of people <laughs> using it this way. Yeah, I had not until he was on the show several months ago. And every time he's in chat, I find a way to make a quick just, just jab at him for it. Uh, so what's it like working in Godot? Um, I, I really enjoy it, actually. Um, well, just the fact that uh, it's open source is, is really cool, and that's, that's the thing that brought us to it. Um, but also the community is really good. You, you, usually you can find the answer to any problem, and... Even if you can't, you just post on the forums and people will help you. People always will help you. It's really cool. Nice. That's really nice to hear, uh, especially because uh, I know gaming communities can often, what's the word I'm looking for, be utter garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also because it's open source, people are always trying to help, you know, because you, you'll never pay for, for the Zane. And so you try to help the community as well. Yeah, you try to give back. Yeah. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. I hope you two are giving back, you know, sticking with that 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 community thing here. Uh, or else old man Tom will come get you. No, I'm <laughs> uh, old man Tom don't care. No. Um, so have you uh, worked with other engines like Unity or Unreal or Game Maker uh, before, or is Godot one of the first you've worked with? Um, uh, just uh, to to make something clear, uh, I have not. Uh, I I don't have that much experience with uh, game engines. Um, he's the one that does all the programming. Um, I'm just learning Godot and uh, and uh, learning to to like set up scenes and stuff because I work mostly with the other areas of the game, like making assets and stuff. And so he's the <laughs> one that's going to do the talking right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I work with uh, Unity a little bit. I work more with uh, Unreal, but not, um, not a whole lot. Um, Godot was one of the first game engine game engines that I really dug into, and I think uh, it's I think it's really good. Um, I really like the language that they use. Um, they use their own language, but they they have an editor in the engine, so you don't have to open another editor that's very slow and makes oh, your computer slow that is one of the worst things going between uh, uh what is it uh, visual studio yeah. and unreal or unity if you are in the the programming language camp which i'm not uh <laughs> but yeah i mean if you are going that route it feels like you almost need to have like two separate computers running in parallel with each other to to really do that because you know visual studio for something as effectively a text editor is yeah. really system intensive it really is um and godot has its own editor in the engine so it's really fast and any change that you make you you can uh, you can see the results uh, on the spot and it's i, I really like it nice yeah Glad to hear that. And uh, Rubens, you said you're working in Blender for the art. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm making uh, a lot of assets, and I, I'm I'm not uh, that experienced in, in Blender. Um, um, in college, I I learned Maya, uh, but I'm trying to get used to Blender, and because it's a great tool and you can do a lot with it and so we 
We want and... to keep the, the, the open source thing through the whole game. So uh, everywhere everywhere we can, we, we try to look for these uh, pieces of software that are open source. And are... Yeah, we're using Krita as well, um, yeah. instead of Photoshop or anything like that. Yeah. Man, I, uh, as somebody else who also learned Maya, uh, I fully respect and understand moving to something like Blender uh, because uh, subscription-based services for software suites is terrible. Yeah, yeah. The person who decided that was a good idea needs to be <laughs> yeah. like s just just slapped, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, oh, hey, Sabby, how's it going? Um, I, 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 I presume, Sabi, you're asking if, if they're twins. I don't think um, so, but, no. <laughs> but they do um, have similar haircuts and hair color at the moment. So I yeah, understand. Actually, that. the, the, um, this light is making our hair, our hairs look the same, but they, uh, they have different colors actually, uh, or they used to, uh, but, nice. um, but he's actually my husband. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, nice. <laughs> that makes you two the second married couple I've had on the show oh, cool. working together in game <laughs> development. Wow. Wow. First Brazilian guest, uh, first or second married couple. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> so many firsts today. Um, well, uh, one, congratulations. Uh, and Thanks. I don't have a two to go along with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, really? The, there are two main questions I have uh, left uh, for you in this. And the first one, uh, they're, like the, they're both like kind of big. So I'm going to open with the one that's more relevant to Iris first. And that is, uh, what are your like, main plans moving forward with the game? Like, uh, you know, not necessarily like, hey, we're going to add this feature and this feature. And it's going to have the big overarching story and voice acting, but just, you know, where, you know, what is your roadmap for Iris? Yeah, we have many plans. Yeah. You can talk <laughs> um, about plans. Uh, first, we, uh, we, like we said, we started the, the, this project uh, three years ago uh, in a game jam, and it was a 2D game then um and so this year we we decided to start it from scratch um and make it 3d and change a yeah, whole lot um, of things you know quarantine we yeah. needed <laughs> something to do yeah um i can fully and... understand that that's definitely yeah. not the driving force behind me getting this show off the ground he <laughs> said with his sarcastic face <laughs> but we we decided to start from the ground up again and um we actually we were thinking if we should keep the game 2d or make it 3d and we decided that we could tell a more dynamic story if we made it 3d but we wanted to keep the feel uh of a, of a 2d game so that's why the game kind of looks like like um, sort of a painting um we're using, we're using some shaders which um I don't know if you have any experience with that, but it's something really hard to uh, work with. Oh, uh, <laughs> to learn. Uh, I don't know if you can, uh, how well uh, it's transmitting over to you guys, but just the shader to give like the outlines to all of these objects, that was about an hour's worth of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so but, I understand, and that's just to give things outlines. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know where where it stopped. Um, so yeah, we we started from scratch, and so our our main idea is to eventually uh, I don't know how how long from now, um, but to do a crowdfunding campaign uh, to uh, try and um, fund uh, the development of the game because we uh, right now we are not uh, working. So we can spend uh, a lot of time uh, doing it, but uh, in a few months, if we want to keep doing uh, it this way and uh, really uh, compromising with uh, the development, we 
we would need uh, funding to yeah um, keep working so uh, we have this idea of doing a crowdfunding and then a few more months to develop the game uh, put it on steam uh, we we hope that maybe we can uh, get it on switch too I was uh, yeah, even we, just thinking that this sounds like the yeah. perfect kind of game for the Switch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we think that too, and we we hope we can uh, do that because we, we think it would uh, uh, fit really well with that platform. Um, nice. And that's basically it. Yeah. Um, we hope we can um, we can have a successful crowdfunding campaign to to keep us going for the time needed to, to finish the game and then uh, publish it somewhere, Steam, HIO, and everywhere we can. Yeah. Well, uh, it, oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, it's our, our first uh, big game. Uh, we we did some, some things for Game Jams and uh, some little projects that weren't finished. Uh, so it's our first big project and we we really hope it, it lands and uh, yeah we have yeah. a very long list of unfinished pro projects yeah. <laughs> nice yeah i uh i might know a thing or two about a long list <laughs> of unfinished projects uh, uh don't ever look in my my unreal projects folder <laughs> it is a hellscape of best forgotten ideas <laughs> that I still want to make. Yeah. 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 Um, we, we also have that. We, uh, we, we think uh, sometimes we, we, we talk about projects that we want to go back to after Iris is done and hopefully, uh, we can do that because we, we have some ideas that we really like. Nice. Well, uh, here's hoping, you know, Iris is a success for you too. I mean, it goes without saying that, you know, you have my support. Uh, Thank you. We, yeah, I mean, uh, like that's the, uh, you know, I, I feel like I say this every show, but I mean it. The wonderful thing about being a small show with no sponsors, no bosses, except for myself, is I get to have, you know, I get to ask guests on the show who I really want to talk to. You know, and it's like I saw your game on Pitcher Game, and I was like, "Yo, this game's charming as hell." I want to talk with these people, you know. And it's just, you know, or or uh, like I'm looking, you know, the active people in chat right now, Nick, Liam, and Sabby are all former guests of the show. You know, uh, uh, Liam in charge of Pitcher Game, Nick himself is also another game developer. Sabby's a virtual reality artist. Um, you know. He, you know, like uh, her video on YouTube is still like the top performing video of this show of all time. Uh, you know, for now, for now, you know, <laughs> until like the next time I have her on the show or something like that, probably. And then Fictional Cat is an excellent mod uh, who uh, also does some experimenting in VR chat worlds. So, uh, you know, it's like, I like the freedom of having that small show and just, you know, like just getting to talk cool shit with cool people. Yeah. So it seems cool. Yeah. And so, you know, like I'm super happy to have you both on and yeah, I mean like, dude, game looks cool. I mean, I was down before I knew that it had like a, like a deeper meaning and cooler story. And now it has a deeper meaning and a cool story. Like <laughs> I want you guys to do well. So, yeah. Um, uh... Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we we are really really happy to be here too. Uh, and, uh, we are honored to have been invited to your show. Um, we know there are uh, lots of projects out, out there, great projects, and uh, to be like chosen, <laughs> it's it's really it, the it, few and the proud. No. <laughs> Yeah, it, it validates a, a lot of our, our work to see people uh, responding to it. And yeah, we uh, we weren't for a time we were kind of working on it, and uh, but we weren't really posting anything <clears throat> to social media. And the validation that you get from 
uh, people liking your game and um, people saying that it looks cool and it, it just it, it drives you, you know. It's I, really cool. I fully wholeheartedly understand that. Um, uh, you know, it just for me the the validation comes from you know uh, I, I've had a couple uh, you know uh, veteran game developers on the show and they looked at my stuff before the show and after the show and they're like, dude, I have no idea how you do this. And I'm, you know, talking with these people who've made like these games that I'm just, just huge, a huge fan of like these guys who've done these awesome things. And I'm like, how did I do something that you can't figure out, <laughs> you know? And it's just, you so see, yeah, it's, it's, there's just something so positive about being noticed. And, yeah. you know, I'm like, I'm super happy that I'm able to, to do that for you guys. Um, Thank you. Because yeah, I mean, it's, we we could sit here and go back and forth on this all day, uh, and maybe we will. <laughs> but uh, there is one last real big question I want to have for you guys, and uh, it's uh, one of those things. And I can't speak for all of America. Uh, clearly, uh, I am but a humble robot who lives in a garage. But uh, I know that I know absolutely nothing about the game dev scene or even just the gaming scene down in Brazil. So, you know, so like, uh, uh, what are like the popular like platforms that you guys are playing on? What's the development scene down there? Like, I mean, you know, up here it's, it's very clearly it's, uh, well, not very clearly, but up here in the States, you know, we're very kind of, uh, uh, like console driven and also kind of PC and shooter driven and stuff like that. So it's just always interesting to, you know, meet people from outside of that bubble and hear about what it's like, you know, for the rest of the world. Um, yeah, um, it's not so different here, to be honest. Um, um, usually people buy consoles not, not as soon as they come out because um, there's this whole thing that they aren't made here usually uh, when they're launched, so they're really expensive. But um, once the factories start making them in our country, it, uh, it gets cheaper. And I think you, people, uh, people play more consoles than, than computer usually. I don't, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah but um, I don't think it's too different from, from the, the United States and it's also very shooter driven and um, it's uh, the big AAA games are usually the ones that, that people really like as yeah. usual. Um, but and some of them are even good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but actually uh, Brazil buy people in Brazil buy a lot of games. Um, it's, yeah. it's, one of the biggest markets in the world, I think. It's it's huh. top ten, I think. Yeah, uh, we we see a lot of um, things that are made uh, directly to Brazil, like um, Valorant, yeah, yeah. Uh, for example. Uh, they were from the beginning. They were pretty pretty. Um, they knew that the game would the, do big here. So yeah, because League they, of Legends, uh, yeah. which is theirs, which is. Um, I forgot the name from of Riot. Yeah, Riot Games. Yep. Um, it is also really big here. Yeah, so they they made a lot of uh, marketing uh, directed to Brazil. Uh, the the game even has a a, a Brazilian character. Uh, oh, in nice. It. So, yeah, so. But are they um, as cool as Lucio? No, no. Uh, well, but, uh, though she she is dubbed by the uh, Car Carolina Havassa who dubs Sombra in Overwatch. So yeah, that's, it's uh, the same voice yeah. actress, and yeah. Yeah, she's really cool. Nice. But as far as development here, um, there are many game companies, um, some big ones, but usually it's mobile games. Um, there are some indie developers. There are, there are um, events for indie games, and uh, it's growing. It's the the indie scene scene here here is growing a lot. Nice, I think like kind of a 
the the future that I would really like to see in games is that every every nation kind of has built their own kind of sustainable uh, ecosystem for their own developers. You know, where, uh, you know, like there's a thriving American indie scene, Brazilian indie scene, Italian, Romanian, Cambodian, you know, and fictional cat. I swear, man. I swear. No, uh, I, I did a pre recorded show yesterday and he's just, he's just pressing my buttons. Um, or, or in the case of a CRT, turning my dials. Uh, but, you know, I, I feel like that's, you know, kind of like a film in that weird way, you know, where, where we have these thriving local businesses and then you get, you know, those, those standout games from uh, those, you know, uh, like the Dario Argento movies from Italy that, that show up over in the States or, or like Run Lola Run from Germany that was a big hit internationally. Like that, that's the future that I really want. You know, I want to, yeah. you know, I one day I want to get like, oh, what's that big indie gem out of, out of Brazil and like, you know, in uh, full Portuguese with, with Americans or with English subtitles and stuff and just, yeah, I'd love, I hope that that future comes to be. Yeah. Um, like that it would be, be cool. really cool. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, like, cause we're already in a weird way building towards it with, you know, the triple A's are the Warner brothers and the, the Disney's and, and, uh, I don't even paramounts, of uh, <laughs> uh it's, it, it took way too long to remember different production houses for cinema. Uh, <laughs> You can tell how long they're it's... All, they're all Disney. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. If they aren't, they are they going to be, be eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, dude, I haven't been to a movie theater in so long. It's kind of nice. You know? But, <laughs> I, you know, I miss it a lot. <laughs> I miss it for, like, the big, like, like tentpole movies. You know, like, I miss it for, for Star Wars, for the Marvel yeah. stuff uh uh you know just the big action movies but by and large i mean i really like being able to buy stuff pretty much on release date through like itunes or amazon i really appreciate that uh netflix and uh apple tv and a couple other services have uh picked up movies for like first run stuff so it's it's a weird year that I'm in in very specific ways kind of liking. But the rest of the year is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> but in very uh, specific ways, 2020 is cool. Yeah, we uh uh the, the opportunity to like work from home and be working on uh, our project this is like a, a really good thing that's happening right now for us um and like at the same moment obviously it sucks uh the motive that that led us here but uh this uh this makes us uh, see a, a possibility uh for the future uh, that we could keep working on, on our game uh like this and uh like being our our own boss and like that that that's pretty cool yeah nice yeah because as you said that you can uh you can choose who you bring to the show and you are your own boss um for now it's kind of no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, until you get bought by disney yeah, yeah. that would that's not uh... the worst thing that could happen <laughs> but uh, you know yeah sorry you, silly jokes on my part <laughs> don't worry um but yeah it's it's also kind of happening to us um we're having the opportunity to tell the story we, we want through our game um i i don't think i'd be very happy working for a triple a company to be honest uh yeah i i i'd really I enjoy indie games a lot more than I do AAA games because they are brave enough to do different stuff. You know, it's not it's not just and the new Call of Duty game that came out this year. You know. Yeah, 
Uh, well, we actually we have a question in chat for you. Uh, do you have any things in Godot slash GD script you feel that more Godot developers should know about? And don't mm. be sorry about asking any questions, even if it's been asked before. I'd rather you ask it than not. Yeah, ask away. Um, oh, I have to think. Um, I'm sorry, can we come back to it? I'll, I'll just think on it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Take your time. Think about it. Um, yeah. There, there is one thing though, uh, and this is of of personal importance to me. Uh, how is the coffee in Brazil? Um, I I think it's it's good. It's yeah. Um, I I traveled abroad like a few times. I I'm not sure I drank coffee when I went abroad, so I don't really have a reference to compare it to, but. I really like our coffee. Nice. I've uh, I've only ever had uh, one type of Brazilian coffee before. Uh, it, it it was from Starbucks, so of course, like you know, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. Although yeah. I did see we your Starbucks same, mug. Yeah, we actually have that same the that same Brazilian coffee um, package here in some Starbucks. Well, yeah, I I enjoyed weird. it. I thought it was good. <laughs> it, it had a nice level of acidity, which I wasn't expecting uh, from a, uh, from Brazil, mostly because if memory serves, Brazil isn't a country that has a lot of active or dormant volcanoes, uh, no. <laughs> um, which is generally, you know, volcanic soil generally tends to be the one that imparts more acidity than other places, which is why I tend to like uh, coffees out of East Africa and uh, Central and uh, Central America and Northern South America. Uh, I, I am a coffee nerd and a coffee snob. So... <laughs> I well, know you, what you I really like. Know your coffee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've worked at Starbucks now for four years and I, anytime there's an opportunity to actually learn more about coffee, I take it <laughs> because it's, uh, you know, we like to th like coffee is just this, uh, it's one of those universal things of human culture almost, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it has such a weird history of you know starting in africa and then moving out through the rest of the world like it's just this crazy cool fun thing and yeah i like my coffee i i like talking about it i like sampling it from different regions uh like if if i were pressed and somebody said hey tom where do you think the best coffee in the world comes from and without a doubt i would say rwanda uh I've had like three different Rwandan coffees. Every one of them is just brilliant. And like, I just, I just, I love them so much. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Uh, gentlemen, I don't know how you feel about dabbing, but we have uh, a okay. fictional cat. My, my mod Supreme has just uh, uh, turned in over 1200 points for the three of us to dab and since i can now make coffee cups happen at will i have decided that uh i'm not kidding look at that two stack <laughs> i am i'm going to dab with coffee cups but oh, uh, okay oh, um, my, my mug is empty okay. but i can you can okay, all just, right just don't uh, just don't tell anyone uh, <laughs> okay i will not tell anyone that you did this so uh in three two one Dab. Coffee dabs. <laughs> Throw that one away. I don't need it anymore. Don't need that one either. Ooh, hold on a sec. I want to see. Can I can I land this on your table? No. <laughs> <sighs> you know, one you know what? We'll we'll make a game of this. We'll like yeah, uh, yeah, I'll like I'll, I'll I'll put like a a basket or something over there behind camera, and then we'll like it'll be a bit in the show where it's like uh, we'll we'll see if I can make the shot, you know. Yeah, that's cool. You can have a, a counter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. 
you know, and like if I make the shot, you know, like nothing happens. And if I miss it, I have to do something embarrassing or something. Who knows? <laughs> you know, just just throwing out ideas here. Um, well, guys, uh, it's been so awesome having you here. But before I let you go, I have yeah, okay, one I last. I haven't answered the, the Godot question. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, I forgot. Um, Thank I, you for remembering. I am sure that there are a lot of things that I can't remember right now, but um, I'll actually talk about the the shader language that they use, um, which isn't the GD script. They have the they have their own programming language for scripting, and they have their um, their own shading language for shaders, and it's actually really good. It's simplified and um and if i if i watch any tutorial for like a, a blender shader or um a unity shader i can just translate it uh, once i've learned the the keywords for the language and i i actually think it's really worth looking at yeah. cool well uh before i i let you go there's one last thing that we need to do, and it's a little bit that I call the five questions. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar, and for any first-time viewers at home, the five questions are, well, five questions that I put together before the show that, with the exception of like one of them, have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about leading up to this point. So, okay. uh, question number one, uh, this one I've been asking everybody lately because I love getting the answer on this one. Uh, what is your favorite street food? I really like hot dogs. And, and that's, that's a very interesting thing because Brazilian hot dogs are very different, yeah. um, uh, no, they're so not like you, American hot dogs. So do you like the Brazilian yeah. ones or the American ones? Is I, that... I prefer the Brazilian ones. Yeah, okay. They, are, they have a, a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the difference? Um, yeah. We, we, Cause like, um, I'm super intrigued now because I love American hot dogs and I also love okay. Danish hot dogs. So like, yeah. I got, I got to figure we, out, you know, we, as a nation, we, we really like to take, um, food from other places and put everything that we can inside it. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, okay. It's it has like um, mayo, mustard, ketchup, um, sometimes mashed potatoes in some places. Yeah. Um, what else? You're not scaring me off of these Brazilian hot dogs. They sound um, wonderful. <laughs> sometimes there's uh, boiled eggs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what else? Sausage, obviously. Sausage, uh, corn. Um, would you be? Like... I can't remember. Peas, peas. Yeah, yeah peas. peas. Sorry, we we uh, forgot the word for. Uh, oh, don't peas. worry about it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff, and and sometimes different states have different things that they put. Yeah. In it. Yeah. Well. Uh... Have either of you heard of the Chicago hot dog? No, I haven't. Um, well, uh, here in the States, very clearly, uh, everywhere has their own, like, kind of regional hot dog thing. Except for Wisconsin, they do, like, bratwurst and Italian sausages. They, they do, like, like, sausage sausage, not hot dogs. But in Chicago, what they do is they basically put, uh, uh, so it's uh, tomatoes, onions, hot peppers, a pickle, celery salt uh uh mustard ketchup does not go on hot dogs in chicago if you are in chicago and you're getting hot dogs do not ask for ketchup they will just they, they will like kick you out i mean that's not entirely <laughs> true but just just trust me don't do that um but yeah that, that's the stuff that i can flat out remember being on a chicago style dog and you know it's you know I've never actually had one because I'm, uh, well, I didn't, yeah, I, I, oh, tomatoes on there too. You know, it's just, there's a handful of like individual things that I'm not really too keen on, like 
tomatoes like i don't like raw tomatoes yeah. like tomatoes like yeah. hooks like yeah i'm down for that but Maybe like raw tomatoes no thank you but yeah it's it's it, the chicago dog is an institution um <laughs> but the brazilian hot dog that sounds good too yeah so it's, if i'm ever down in brazil i'm getting in touch with you guys to be like <laughs> okay. where, where's where's the good brazilian dog um so question number two uh this is the question that kind of pertains to something we talked about earlier and i didn't intend for that to happen but it did uh do you drink your coffee black or with like cream sugar or whatever else in it um i i, I like it black but I, I i also like to put um uh, a lot of sugar that might be um uh, controversial but I, I i put a lot of sugar in it sometimes um, but i i, I pretty, pretty much like it either way yeah i i drink um i drink my coffee black just no sugar anything just just the coffee and i i like the strongest the better I can understand that entirely. Uh, I had a regular at my Starbucks who would come through about once a month or so, and he would order his coffee. He's like, I'd like my coffee black, no garbage. And uh, I just, you know, the way he would say it was just, you know, he's like, I'd like my coffee black, no garbage. You know, just, just, just straight to the point. And I was like, I can get behind this. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a black coffee drinker. It's just, but which probably surprises neither of you. Uh, <laughs> uh but yeah coffee nectar of the gods uh yeah question number three uh what is your favorite dinosaur you, you guys got some good ones down in south america too i mean patagotitan giganotosaurus carnotaurus yeah i can Okay, I, I can see that this is gonna be just like the coffee that I uh, I don't know that much about, and you like know everything, but <laughs> <laughs> I I don't even uh, know like Brazilian or South American dinosaurs. Well, well I mean, I'm you know like y your favorite dinosaur doesn't need to be South American. I'm just okay, you know yeah, yeah. throwing those out there, and um, if if it makes you feel any better, I'm hoping to have a baller paleontologist on either next month or October. So if you want to see me get like, di get my dinosaur <laughs> self, like just, just, just beat to hell. Uh, <laughs> come watch that episode. Uh. Um, so uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, what comes to, to my head is like a brontosaurus. Like it's one the I remember that I, I think it's cool. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Yeah, I I used to love dinosaurs when I was a kid, and but I can't remember any dinosaur <laughs> names. I used to know all of them, but I don't know any anymore. Yeah. But I used to love one that I know that it it would eat eggs. Uh, Over raptor. Yeah, I think that's the one. It, it has something on its nose. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, fun uh, uh, update for you. Uh, it turns out that the whole reason it was named Oviraptor was because its original, the original fossil that they found of it, it was uh, covering up a clutch of eggs, and everybody just assumed that it was stealing the eggs because at the time they discovered it, they didn't know that dinosaurs actually cared for their young. So, they found out that the eggs it was covering were actually its own clutch of eggs and so because it's had the name forever they it just kept with it but it's a, a misnomer it uh likely wasn't an egg hunter at all cool that's cool yeah my, <laughs> my childhood was a lie but <laughs> well, it wasn't a lie it just it was incorrect <laughs> You know, it yeah, wasn't definitely. it wasn't like the scientists knew and they were all like, hmm, yes, we know <laughs> this dinosaur doesn't actually eat eggs, but we're going to we're going to lie to Vinny. We're going to make him think that they're they're egg thieves for his whole life. <laughs> you know, you're fine. But no, I mean, it's a cool looking dinosaur. So, yeah, you know. it looks cool. I used to love dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I never I never stopped. <laughs> if that isn't obvious. Uh, yeah. 
All right. So uh, question number four, uh, who do you watch on YouTube? Is there anyone we don't watch on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, we, we, we watch a lot of YouTube. Uh, basically, uh, all day, we, we don't watch uh, uh, TV like uh, normal like channels. Uh, we haven't watched that, that many series lately. So we, we basically, all day, we watch YouTube. So there's a lot. Um, uh, I can think like of uh, Fitzy here from uh, his um, and Overwatch streamer, and I watch his videos a lot. Yeah, I've I've been watching. Uh, I I really like tabletop RPGs, mm -hmm. and I've been watching the the Roll Twenty channel. Um, they have many uh, many RPGs that they have people playing, and. Uh, when I'm working and I, I'm doing something that that I don't really need to think about, I like to listen to it. And nice. when I'm doing something very mechanic, and it's been helping me keep sane. <laughs> I can fully understand that. Uh, what with the vast majority of 2020 being absolute garbage. Yeah. It's uh, fun to escape to another world yeah. sometimes. It really is. I've... Uh... I've fallen into watching a lot of uh, Warhammer 40k uh, YouTubers, and one of the ones I, I started watching, uh, Midwinter Minis is the name of his channel. He's uh, an English guy, and he challenged Henry Cavill, 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 the actor uh, who uh, yeah. uh, has been using his quarantine to paint his Warhammer armies and build a PC. Uh, he challenged him to a game of 40k. And, you know, like, of course, like Henry probably is never going to see the video, but either way, I'm just like, oh my God, I want them. I want them to play 40 K together. And I want to watch this on YouTube because I love the yeah. fact that the dude who played Superman is a hardcore <laughs> nerd. And that's just yeah. like, like, that's just so cool. Um, yeah. And yeah. well, the final, I, I question. played oh. some 40 K I, I played Necrons, um, I really I like the so yeah. I like the look of their army. I've never played forty k. That's the only reason I chose them because they look really cool. Yeah. Killer robots from space. Yeah, killer robots who sold their souls to become robots. Yeah. Um. So that's like even just like double stupid. But no. <laughs> uh. Well, the final question for our five questions today is, uh, PC or console. Um, I, I think, I think PC, uh, for me, uh, I, I really like, uh, my f favorite game, uh, is, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. So like that counts a lot for, uh, console, yeah. uh, but I, I, I think, uh, PC being a, a platform that like can, can like have it all, uh, I think it's. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I think that if it's Nintendo Switch, uh, <laughs> I, I would choose console. Um, any other, I would choose PC. I really, really like the Switch. Um, I like that they they have a lot of indie games. And, and Nintendo also sometimes doesn't really feel like a AAA because they... Um, they make different things. They they don't innovate that much with games usually. They did with Breath of the Wild, but um, they're not afraid of making weird consoles, you know? I, I love yeah. that. I, yeah, I they only take had, chances. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I only had uh, Nintendo consoles uh, for all my life. Uh, uh, so uh, un uh, until I met him, uh, he, he has an Xbox too, but so uh, I'm a big Nintendo fan, but but I really like PC also. So yeah. Yeah, I mean they're demonstrably better. You know, just just pure hardware specs is what I'm talking yeah. about here. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So uh, my answer to that question is always yes. Yes. Uh, uh, and and uh, also also. Uh, like developing for a PC is a lot uh, easier. So, uh, 
like our, our game, for example, uh, uh, we might not get it to Switch or other consoles, but surely it will be on PC. Uh, like, that's not a question. That's nice. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, uh, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, before we part ways, uh, aside from the Iris uh, Twitter account, is there anywhere else uh, people should be looking to get updates on the game? Um, there's uh, an Instagram account also uh, with the same handle, uh, right, Iris so. the Game. Yep. Um, also Facebook. Uh, but we, we basically post uh, uh, the same things everywhere. And Twitter gets a lot more of, of new info, so uh, yeah, we post yeah. more things to Twitter, um, but we the the big posts go to all the social media. Yeah, cool. Um, and and thank you so much for having us. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, it's, been it's been really been a, fun. Yeah, it's been an honor, and we're really happy for the the opportunity to to be here. Cool. Well, I'm glad you guys had a good time. Uh, uh, hang out for just a minute. Uh, right now, I got to do a quick little change back over to this camera so I can say to everybody, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, real quick, tomorrow I'll be back with another brand new live episode at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time with my friend Ashley Cooper, uh, who's a streamer, screenwriter, game developer, does a whole bunch of things. Either way, I think we're just going to sit down and talk about the halo master chief collection uh to everybody who has joined us today thank you so much for being here liam savvy fictional cat no ptr games i think is what that is my monitor resolution here is kind of crummy but uh other than that everybody thank you so much for joining us i will be back tomorrow as i said with that other show until then drink some water have some vitamins wear your mask be safe and most of all be kind so thank you all for joining me today and I'll see you next time on an all new episode of that Tom Clancy show. Good night. Oh, that was, that was bad here. Yeah, that was better.